Ugh, detach the cat. Detach the cat. What are you doing? Uh, I guess no. No blanket. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I hope you're good. I know you're not supposed to judge the book by the cover, but today we are judging the books by the covers. <laughs> not only is this video such a personal preference and personal opinion, but it's also seasonal. When years go by, my taste in the covers change, admittedly, not massively. So the covers that I might show you might be entirely not up to your taste, but I thought I will show you the covers that I like from my collection the most. This has nothing zilch to do to the story. Some of them I've not read, some of them I have, some of them are my favorite, some of them were just okay. Um, but we're talking about the exterior. <laughs> Grab a cup of tea. <laughs> this is not gonna be serious. I was only focusing on the hardcovers this time. If you enjoy this video, maybe I'll go through my paper bags. But as I picked out some of the books that I enjoyed the covers of the most, which were quite a lot, but as you can tell by empty spaces <laughs> in the bookshelf behind me, I thought that there are some categories that I could see forming. So the first overall category of the covers that I've noticed I like and gravitate towards are the white, somewhat simplistic, feature single color covers. And by that, I mean the likes of um, Nevernight. I think the whole series, the whole trilogy in these particular covers, I really, really like. The only thing is that I wish, because they have like these spine details and I kind of wish that they matched up to an image. I think that would have been amazing. But these covers have really beautiful detailing because even though from afar it's pre pretty simple cover, it's just like a crow with a red bubble here. <laughs> um, or the sun, whatever. But when you look closer to the actual image, is it consists of multiple symbols that represent stuff from the stories and I think it's really cool. Also has cool end papers because it's a starry night. So I like that. The next three are similar yet a little bit unique in between themselves, but they all, all of the three have white backgrounds and smoke details and a single color. So the first one is the Poppy Wall covers. Um, I, again, all three of the books have a similar theme going. This particular edition is from Illumicrate that does have the smoke on the edge. But we just have the character and this kind of like almost like a dream, a distance, distant memory, watercolorish vibe, and I enjoy that. Very similarly, UK covers of Brandon Sanderson, so it would be that Mistborn, or very similarly Stormlight, they have a very specific theme. They don't, they actually match the main color through the covers. Uh, it's just a different illustration, but again, with this like smoke, obviously in Mistborn it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> For the smoke to be there, a single feature color. And we have blue throughout Mistborn series and the red through Stormlight. And I just re I really like it. I really like it. Sometimes simple is better. And the next one is actually probably maybe the simple I think it must be the simplest cover in the lineup that I have here ready for you guys, because uh it's this. It's the year of the witching and it literally has what I'm assuming a rune um, that's burning, singeing marks here. But other than that, there's not much to it. Again, we have a red color and a little bit of red around the rune as a pop of color, I guess. But other than that, there's nothing going on. But I love it. <laughs> I really, really like it. I think it's nice. It's, it grabs your attention. It looks maybe a little bit closer to like literary fiction, which it isn't. So I'm not sure if it's the best for marketing, but it would get me. So so that is the white covers. Then I have two books that are the feature letter. <laughs> so this one is called D, A Tale of Two Worlds. And it's obvious it has this beautiful foiling on it and a dragonfly, which I'm a big fan of stylistically and just some decorative stuff around it but the main thing is the letter similarly I, we also have hamnet and not only is the actual cover beautiful but this book is just made better when it's undressed because <laughs> you guys know i like the naked covers here first of all the spine is real beautiful i like when they put the name like this on it 
but also you then have the same kind of design on here but you also have it in foil and I think it just looks really stunning so clearly I have, I have a type <laughs> and I was picking these books like you know just without too much thinking from the bookshelves and then just realize the common ground later so then we have a bunch of dark covers that mainly have something foily or golden on them which again is something that I quite like Robin Hobb um, Assassin's Apprentice the illustrated edition and is really beautiful the cover is beautiful but it also has this um feeling of a old tale fairy tale because it it's not cloth bound but it pretends to be if that makes sense it's uh it doesn't have a dust jacket and inside it's actually um illustrated and just an overall feel of this book is really nice it's quite heavy it feels like a collectible and for that i really like i will say i'm a little bit of a sucker when it comes to uh, horns on covers i do like myself a horn on a cover um, i should probably say antlers antlers makes a bit more sense but anything like that i quite enjoy as well so and then you just plop a little bit of foil around it to be decorative and you won me and there's also a little skull at the back which i also quite like then we have some floral stuff in the dark box that also have foil details no particular order by the way but the ray bear i absolutely adore not only is the design so beautiful and stunning i actually really like the smaller hardcovers and i wish we had more of those i'm not sure if i'm a popular opinion on this one i could be entirely not but i really like it we also have a woman's face here and i just I love everything about this cover. The autumnal colors, and even though there's not an abundance of foil on the cover, the, the, the foil that it does have stands out so much that it doesn't matter. Like, it just, it feels very well designed. <laughs> I know that's a silly thing to say, but I just, I love this cover a lot. And then we also have, this is a Fairlude edition, so we also have these spray edges, which just well, stencil edges, which really takes it all together, and I just, I love it. I need to read this soon. This one almost didn't make it. I am currently on a flower kick, so <laughs> we have the 10,000 uh, 10, Doors of January, and this is the same uh, cover designer as the next book's gonna be, but I think it's very stylish, and um, there is some UV spotting here, and of all of the features that a book can have, UV spot is something that I'm not particularly keen I've done I don't mind it it's not something that I love though um, the UV spot is basically the stuff that is glossy on top of the matte cover just not a like I don't mind it but it's not something I you know look out for like a foil so it's quite busy but it's not overwhelmingly so and I just I really enjoy it you have some keys and you have a lock and it just it just fits I guess maybe keys and locks also is something that I enjoy seeing on the cover so it could be that as well the next two books are not only in the same category but they are also books that look amazing uh when undressed so this one is the the binding really love the cover as is but then you undress it first of all these end papers are amazingly beautiful but then you undress it and you have this are you joking me <laughs> and it goes on both sides is just it's the closest to having the whole bloody cover just be <laughs> a sheet of foil but obviously better because it's beautiful but this is this is extreme and we like that here similarly but with more copper stuff we have Cersei again super super foily and floral and um I think it was a brilliant design choice to make the middle be foil so then you can cut out Cersei so it stands out and also you undress it and you have a very always oh, on one side only <laughs> but you have a very similar situation on the front cover and it's just I mean it's just stunning tough act to follow um but the wicker king so this is actually i don't think this is actually foil it's hard to tell because the cover is glossy um but it almost has this effect that there's a person standing behind all of the doodles and it really makes sense when you read the book um so i really enjoy that kind of double layer effect when in reality this isn't like you know how Obsidio like hardcover has this stuff when you like put the cover and it's like see-through and so it has that effect of 
two layers. This one is just a normal dust jacket. It doesn't have anything like that, but it looks like there's nothing underneath as well. I don't really like real people on covers. I feel like a lot of people have this similar opinion, but I really like this one. It just makes so much sense. But even before I read the book, I still quite liked it caught my attention. Speaking of catching my attention, this this one um, I really, really love. I've not had good luck with this author's books before, but this is the one that I still want to give a go. Um, and this is, again, a very simple cover. This is akin a little bit to, I guess, the white cover with like a single color on top, but it's the reverse. It's white on black. And it is the middle game. I know it's a very simple color cover, but I, if I've seen this in a bookstore, I would I would 100% pick it up. It's a little bit unexpected. It's like you, because you understand it's a hand. It's a hand, but the hand's on fire. It's a hand, the candle. It appeals to me. That's it. <laughs> Next three books are a sci-fi picks. I feel like sci-fi is then very dirty with their covers a lot of the time, with the space opera especially, but um, there are some that when they do it right, they do it right. <laughs> Themis Files. Um, this is Sleeping Giants, but I'll show you in the B-roll the other ones. This has like speckles of foil on it. Like it's hard to see now, but they have speckles of foil and it forms the stars and within the stars there is a face. And all of the covers are basically that and I love it. There's something about the blurriness of the face made of space and the story obviously this is one of my favorite stories so i may be a little bit biased <laughs> then we have this i can be swayed with the nice foil frame and a gray scale cover fairly often <laughs> so this is not very surprising I, again, we have, you know, a single color in which ca this case is yellow. This has yellow spray just from Fairy Loot as well. Uh, has some foil, not too much, but it has this, you know, kind of sad looking scene. It appeals to me a lot and I think a lot of people like this cover, so I probably don't need to explain myself a little. So the next one uh, is a little bit different because it has two color combo that I don't normally like, but it really works for in this case and that is Persephone Station. I really like, again, the spot UV <laughs> bit here kind of works because it takes the person on the cover away from the background and it makes it pop. Um, I am not a neon cover person normally. I don't necessarily love neon covers. It's not, some of them are great, don't get me wrong, but it's normally not my cup of tea. So the yellow with the kind of like peach pink thing is not my favorite. But there's something about this that I really like. It's the androidy bits on her face, the cloak made of stars, the really edgy look of it. I just, I love it. The next three books are books that are not necessarily my pick for the cover, but something in their structure makes them. So first of all is I chose Golden Sun because it's my favorite color scheme of them all, but this is the Fairloot Golden Sun edition. So we have the purple edges and I just like this light beige with purple. I really, really like it. I like the covers even though they don't have too much. It looks very sci-fi-ish, so I like it. But the thing that makes them to me is the spines when they align and they make one image. I'm a big fan of that. Then we have Kingdom of the Wicked, which is a nice cover and everything, but I would never pick it out out of the layout if it was just that. But these sprayed edges, <laughs> these sprayed edges still make my jaw drop because of like the look at that detail. Like how? It's just <laughs> I can. And then we have the <laughs> Fair Loot again set of An Ember in the Ashes books by Sabata. And they do have like foil that's not on the normal ones, and this is all hardcover, so it's great. You know how I love <laughs> these kind of shapes, and if you've seen my bullet journal or my other little designs that I do in places, then you'll know that I'm a big fan of these kind of shape designs. So we have stuff on the edges, then beautiful and papers but then what truly to me i think makes these books is this foil design on the front cover i just love it i love it and then i have my last category which is probably the most uncategorized category so i kind of um named it you know like 
It's a lot, but it makes sense. Oh, it's a lot, but it works. This particular book is not a cover that I normally thought I would like because it is very colorful, but this, the, the, the feels this cover gives me, and not just because I have read the book, but even before, the, the welcoming of it, the, the loneliness of it, the color schemes, the dreaminess, is just, it, this cover is a lot of great things. <laughs> and the House of the Cerulean Sea, it's just, it's beautiful. It's really, really beautiful. Winter's Promise. Now, I love floating cities. It's one of my absolute favorite things. I am a big, big, big fan of kind of, of line art when it is meant to just be line art and I genuinely wish there were more covers that were of illustrations that are just line art or pencil or whatever like blueprint style which is not this is not really blueprint but blueprint would also be amazing and I, I, I genuinely do wish we had more covers like that I think it's beautiful another one that is quite a lot but it works is the crescent city i genuinely really like the cover the detail in the lady um the amount of like kind of almost steampunk feels to it and something about it i really like you might have noticed there were not an abundance of red covers because i don't necessarily love red as a color in general so i don't normally gravitate towards it but this I mean, the moon might help, <laughs> but I really, really like it. Of course, we have the Priory of the Orange Tree. I mean, this cover is a piece of bloody art. Again, in a color scheme that I normally wouldn't gravitate towards, especially like orange with blue is a normally a no to me, or yellow in general, actually, now that I think about it. But this just works. I love the illustration, whoever did it. It's just amazing. You have blue foil, which you don't normally see often as well, which makes it a bit interesting, and I think... It was a very nice choice to make the hardcover then be blue. Um, and you have some other dragons as well in the back. And it just, it feels like one of those covers that tells a story, if you know what I mean. Like it's, it's, it's a beautiful, stunning design. The next one is this flat, fairly simple, almost uh, vector style design. And it's especially pretty for me when it's a retelling and this is the perfect example of it. This is a spin in silver. It has a little bit of foil going on for you for only a couple of details, which I also quite like sometimes. It's just to illustrate the important parts of the design. Um, but this is this is very akin to old illustrations, and I think, but, it, but it's modernized enough that you will not think this is old, but you will recognize that it is maybe pertaining to something in history or lore. And I like that. I like when the cover tells you enough detail as to what to expect and what the vibe of the actual story is, which obviously a lot of the covers do, but not all. <laughs> Next one I feel is a little bit of hit or, hit or miss for a lot of people. I think there's always a conversation about this, but I personally actually really like it. I know, again, it's a lot. It's a lot, but for me it works. It clearly doesn't work for some people though, but um, the star, let's see. Um, I know there's a lot happening here. It's, it's a mess. This cover is a mess. There's a person running through a door. There's like a big stamp, it looks all, a little bit like an old book, but it isn't. There's a foil B on the cover, there's these beautiful sprayed edges though. Um, and then there's another person on the back with a completely different background. Again, it looks like an old book, but they're to running towards the same thing. And I don't know, there's a lot, it is a lot. I love it and I want more bees on covers. <laughs> And then the last one is actually the antidote for everything. And I know there's I know there's some other books out there that have like anatomy bits <laughs> elements on the cover and I'm not gonna lie, I almost bought them just for that. I really like it, yet I think this is the only thing that I actually own that has anatomy bits on here. Person stripped and you just kind of see the bones and the muscles and um then you have a plant elements and I think it's it just works so well. It just feels like if this is so well thought out and but like eye grabbing design. I also am a big fan of this. I know very, very not new idea of making the letters disappear behind objects a little bit. So it makes it a bit more interactive. Um, there's again, like a lot of spot UV, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I just don't know why. I just don't love. I do really, really love this cover. And that is all for my random ass cover love video. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now let me know. I would love to know which one of these that I've shown you would be the number one. Uh, it's a tough question, but I would love to know. And also, what is the most beautiful cover for you? 
Am I vain for liking it? Maybe, but I'm kind of okay with that. So um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're well. Stay awesome, stay kind, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So